Today, this junkyard truck is brought back from the dead, and it starts with a spring over axle conversion. Plus, Ian and Jesse play today. Santa Claus for two lucky off-road enthusiasts. That and more today on Extreme 4x4. This one comes Welcome to Extreme 4x4. Take a look around, things look different. You're thinking we're on a show on the road. You're wrong. We finally moved into our new shop at the Power Block Tech Center. We've been putting this place together for a couple of months now and we are super excited to be here. I mean, check this out. We now have a spot for all of our metalworking tools so we don't have to drag them all over the shop whenever we need to work on one of our projects. And now that we have these huge 40-foot ceilings, we are able to put in a mezzanine where you can store parts for our projects, maybe put in some office space. And that leaves this entire floor area as nothing but workspace, like this new bay that we have for our massive Matco hoist. And sitting on that hoist is another new project. I know what you're thinking, new shop, new projects. We got so much on the go. How are we going to keep up? Well, the rest of our projects are still being worked on right now. The suburban gorilla body is at the local rhino dealer getting sprayed. And the Ranger Resurrection is being torn down for paint. Some of you guys may recognize this truck, but most of you probably won't. This is an 85 Land Cruiser FJ60. And this one is in some pretty sad shape. But most of you Toyota lovers know that this is the perfect truck to cut up and get right out on the trail. Now the plans for this project are pretty intense, but today we're going to start with something pretty simple, and that's a spring over axle conversion on this front end. Now before you get all worked up about the fact that we said a spring over axle was simple, well, it is. It needs minimal parts, just a lot of labor, and some know-how. Last time we did a spring over, we got a lot of questions on our power block email. So today we're going to go step by step trying to eliminate all of those questions. Now basically an SOA, a spring over axle, is taking the spring from the bottom of the axle housing and moving it to the top. Not only does this give you five to six inches of lift, but it's also going to eliminate everything underneath the axle so it doesn't get caught up on anything. We're going to start by stripping this axle down to a bare housing but we're not going to unbolt it from the leaf springs yet. The bearing support bolts and the felt retainers. All that's left is the C-clip. <laughs> well, that wasn't supposed to happen. The axle was supposed to hold that in, if there was one. Now you can go ahead and remove your third member. and then place the axle on stands. The FJ60 has these little perches on top of the axle. Now they're used from the factory to hold square U-bolts down through here. And some people use them for perches on a spring over, like someone tried to here with this cobbled up mess, but you really shouldn't do that. So for now, we're just gonna go ahead and measure the caster angle of this axle and record it. With the front axle pretty much out of the truck, we can begin replacing our leaf springs. Now there's a lot of options when it comes to springs. You can go ahead and reuse your old ones, but they have a tendency to get soft and unpredictable. You can compensate that by putting in an add -a leaf but we went ahead and chose a brand new set from Deaver Springs that were built specifically for this truck. And even though Deaver Springs has more leafs in their pack, they're actually made with a thinner material so the spring has more of a flex. The new piece you obviously have to have when performing a spring over is new leaf spring pads to go on top of the axle. Now we got these two from a and Manufacturing and we can drill out these two outer holes to move the axle forward or back one inch after we install it. Now the Toyota housing ramps up really soon on the passenger side knuckle so we're going to have to grind this pad down to fit better. But for now, all this junk that someone else put on here, got to cut it off. <sighs> Normally we'd be able to just bolt in the new springs, but one of the previous owners did one heck of a hack job right here. So we're going to have to replace this whole shackle, which gives us the opportunity to do a shackle reversal, putting the swing shackle back here and the stationary shackle up here. That also gives us an opportunity to move the whole axle forward. All of this together is going to give us a better approach angle and better ground clearance.
Stay tuned to Extreme 4x4, because after the break, the gang heads to Pomona, California and the Off-Road Expo, where two lucky viewers will hit it big. Go pick up those parts that we all got for you. They're all free. People say to us all the time, man, you guys have it great with the big shop, all the fancy tools, any part you want. So this year when we headed to Pomona to the Off-Road Expo show, we decided to give something back. The crowd outside the Pomona Fairplex wasn't waiting to see a poison concert. Nope, they were here for the Off-Road Expo. It's heaven. There's every part known to mankind that he can actually modify his truck for. Over 300 manufacturers gave the people a chance to see the newest and coolest equipment up close. If you want a lift kit, you can get it here. If you want brush guards, you can get it here. Tire manufacturers, wheel manufacturers, all the fab shops. Even our friend Clifton Slay was here, showing off his Suicide Sally. Come all the way from Colorado for this, huh? Best show of the year. As you can see, there are thousands of people here, but each one of them drives a different kind of vehicle. But what two of them don't know is they're gonna leave here today with a truck full of parts. Picking someone from this crowd wasn't gonna be easy. Then I met Jesse Becerra, who was looking to do up his 2003 Dodge. I've had it going on two years, and my pay for 26,000. So far, what I've done to my truck is I put my exhaust and my intake, and everything else so far is just stock. Our first stop was the Fabtech tent, where Bob was there to point Jesse in the right direction. Tom, what you got? Let's see what we can figure out. What model truck do you have? I have a 2003 Dodge, so what do you recommend? Two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive? Four-wheel drive. And is it a half-ton 1500 half model? Yeah. Okay. The suspension system I recommend for your Dodge is our six-inch Fabtech Performance Suspension which is a cross-member style design kit which utilizes knuckles to correct the geometry to get a true six inches of lift and a great ride out of it. If you have any more questions, let us know. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Let's go check out one of the tires. A kick-in suspension needs some good tires. So our next stop was the Mickey Thompson booth. What do you recommend? Well, those ones right there? I like these right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, the Maha Radial ATZ. It's a good all-around uh, tread design for a lot of road driving, not a real aggressive mud snow tire, so it'll give you good wear. Um, uh, it's a good sand and desert style tire. After a day of checking out new products, Jesse didn't have a clue that this was gonna be his lucky day. I'm just doing little at a time as I can afford it. My search turned up Tim Millick, who was looking to cut up his 68 Bronco. I just got it a few months ago, bought it from the second owner. It's completely stocked, all original, original paint, original everything. I want to turn it into a good off-road truck, something the family and I can go camping in, you know, use it as, as a daily driver for work, um, stuff like that. A Bronco? I knew the perfect place to get Tim started. We're here at BC Broncos to get the first step as to how we're gonna get that truck up in the air and uh, working better. So we got Chuck here for BC Broncos. How you doing, Chuck? How you doing? I'm doing great, this is Tim. Hi, Tim. All right, tell him what he needs, man. You're the expert. Okay, you're looking at uh, 35 under a Bronco. Right. So you'll need at least a four and a half inch lift, probably a five and a half inch lift. We've come up with this new arm that has an adjustable cast in it. With this system, there's no uh, cutting, welding, it's just a bolt-in system. Greg Adler races in the Core Series, and he knows Pro Comp Tire. How much four-wheeling you think you're gonna do? Uh, half and half, half street, half. Half street, half wheeling, that, that's right. a pretty good amount. So I'd recommend something aggressive like the Pro Comp Mud Terrain. Okay. Really hooks up nicely, but when you're on the street, thing rides nice, the Bronco's gonna go straight down the road get in the mud or get off-road it, it's got a lot of traction. In fact, that's what I use on my race truck, those okay. same factory Pro Comp mud terrains. Okay, Tim, what kind of seats have you got in your Bronco? Stock. Stock seats, not good for wheeling. So that's why we're here, we're at Mastercraft. I'm gonna introduce you to Lizard. He's gonna take you through what you need to have in that truck. Hi, Tim, nice to meet you. Nice We've actually come out with a new package specifically designed for the uh, early Bronco. What we did with it is we, did, we designed it uh, with a five degree layback on the back, and that's because uh, the pans on the uh, Ford Broncos are such that if we put a Rubicon into it, uh, it would sit too straight up okay. and you'd be nosed into the steering wheel. So we want you to be comfortable out on the ride. 
Um, and, and so that's why we came up with this specific seat. He's got to have bead locks, obviously, so we're here, trail ready, no place to be, so give him the scoop, man. What's you need to know? going to be running on the road and off-road, both? Both, yeah. Okay. In, in which case, I would recommend the aluminum one. It's okay. a more precision design. It uh, runs a little bit true. It's going to balance just as good as, as a regular aluminum wheel. After a day of looking around, Tim was feeling a little overwhelmed. Too much stuff and too little money to, to pay for it all. Too much good stuff. Then it was time to let Tim and Jesse in on our little secret. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us this afternoon. But you know what? You guys can do one more favor for us. One more. What is it, Jesse? Go pick up those parts that we all got all for free, you. Man. They're all free. You guys can build your truck. I'm not kidding. Now, that lift is yours. The tires are yours. Everything's yours. Cheers. Oh. Everything. The lift kit, the wheels, the tires, the seats, the feed locks. It's yours. Really? Yep. Yeah, it's all yours. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. No problem. I'm stunned, to be honest with you. I really am. I didn't expect this at all. At all. Maybe a t-shirt, maybe a sticker or something like that, but three parts now. Not at all. I'm speechless. I'm that really, really speechless. That's anything, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. And it's just, it's awesome. Yeah, their families were there and everything. Like, that's Jesse Sr., Jesse's dad. And that's Tim's wife, Candace, and their little boy, Joey. And they had a blast, and they were totally taken by surprise. Now, we did this a couple months ago, and those guys have finished their trucks. You can see Tim's Bronco. It looks awesome with the big tires, the bead locks, and BC Broncos even kicked in a new front bumper. This is great company, man. And the stance of Jesse's truck completely changed. Going from stock to that lift with the wheels and tires. Mm, looks killer. Good job, guys. Congratulations. Just to remind you guys, we're in the middle of a spring over axle conversion on the front of our FJ60 project. We already stripped the axle tube completely bare, and right now we're finishing up the shackle reversal on the front. Now this is where a spring over axle becomes a little tricky. If this was the rear axle, we could simply twist this thing and point the third member at the transfer case output shaft to give us more ground clearance and be done with it. But because it's a front axle, when you do that, it's going to start to mess with our caster angle. You don't want to ignore this angle. And even though this is going to be a true trail truck and very rarely ever see the pavement, there are some areas where you go wheeling that require a long distance to drive. And ignoring your alignment angles can cause driving issues like wobbles, otherwise known as the death wobble. So to solve this problem on this axle, we're going to perform something that's called a cut and a turn. With the pinion rotated up towards the output shaft, we'll measure the caster angle with the angle finder. Looks good there. This outer housing goes about this far into the axle tubing. So what you're going to want to do is make a cut about 3 eighths of an inch inside of this weld, about a quarter of an inch deep. But make sure you don't cut too far or you're going to have to buy yourself a new axle. <laughs> You'll, it's hard to see it because when you, because you're making a grain in there when you spin that wheel. This is making me nervous. <laughs> it's, it's only it's only an axle. Come on, yeah, it's, not like, it's only the whole axle. <laughs> All right, the axle's cut and turned, and before we weld in our spring perches, we want to remeasure and make sure our axle's in here nice and center. Then all we got to do is put in some new yield bolts, and that's all there is to a spring over. It's pretty simple, it just takes a lot of time. Stay tuned, because after the break, turning your 4x4 into a quality off-roader that you can still drive to work when Extreme 4x4 continues.
These are all emails from the power block asking us the same question. I want a daily driver, but I also want to go four-wheeling sometimes. What kind of truck should I get and what lift should I use? And to answer that question, it's pretty simple. We don't know. It all depends. Are you looking for a full size or a mid size? Maybe an SUV. Are you going to do a lot of work or a little bit of work? Are you going to go hardcore off road or just play around in the field with your buddies on the weekend? So instead of trying to answer a question that broad, we're just going to show you one option. A 94 to 01 Dodge pickup. Think of it this way. These trucks are available for around two to three grand, plus it's a full size rig, lots of room, and of course, solid axle in the front. Of course, if you plan to modify your truck like most of us do, you're gonna wanna make room for larger tires. So a suspension system is in order. When we started looking around and looking at our options, we noticed a trend. Upgrading or buying your kit in stages. This one comes from Skyjacker. With their class one kit, you get the soft ride springs, upper and lower control arms, a pitman arm, a heavy duty steering stabilizer, all the relocation brackets and hardware. Plus, you get an Adelief spring for your rear end. Now when you want to upgrade to class two, you get the front dual shock mounting brackets and the soft ride springs for the rear. Now most companies stop right there, but not Skyjacker. Now the final upgrade is what's on this truck right here, Skyjacker's Platinum Series coilover shocks. Now coilovers are the hot ticket nowadays, and if you're wondering why, check this out. Rebuildable and revalvable design, fully charged with nitrogen, plus adjustable. 7 8 hardened chrome shaft and an external bump stop. These things are hot. And when it comes to wheels, just go ahead and pick what you like. But when it comes to tires, you got to be honest with yourself. If you're going to be spending more time on the pavement than you are off-road, you're going to want an all-terrain tire. If you're going to be spending a little more time wheeling, these Baja claws serve great dual purpose. And don't overdo it, because half-ton trucks can do about 35-inch tires. Anything bigger than that, you're going to want to start messing with your axles. And the real issue with big tires has always been the spare. But check this out. Tire gate from Wilco holds a full size spare, still functions as a tailgate. Plus, you have all the room for all your toys. Now, these newer trucks do have weak links in the drivetrain. You wheel this thing hard enough, and you will find them. But if you're not breaking parts, then you're not wheeling hard enough. That's right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>